Good morning. We welcome you to Swamiko United Methodist Church's digital worship service. We all go through a challenging time. But as Reverend Robert Schuller said, tough times never last, but tough people do. We hope and pray that you will find comfort, healing, and inspiration during our worship service. If you want to know more about our church, please visit our church's website and Facebook, www.swamikoumc.org. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Please join in the unison prayer. We ask you, Lord, to help and defend us, deliver the oppressed, have compassion on the fallen, and reveal yourself to the needy. Please continue to comfort the sick, send helping hands to feed the hungry, and shine your light on those who have strayed from you. In the name of the one who taught us how to live, Jesus our Christ, amen.
Five Shining Stars. You can be a shining star, not a shining star up in the sky. But you can be a shining star to others. A shining star is one who is caring and shows others that they care. A shining star will be someone who is kind to everyone. A shining star is one who is sharing. A shining star is one who is giving. A shining star is someone who is friendly to everyone. So you can be that shining star. Make it a goal each day to be a shining star. We know that song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, How I Wonder What You Are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. You can be a diamond by being a shining star to others. This is a reading taken from the book of Psalms. The Lord is king, let the nations tremble. He sits on his throne between the cherubim. Let the whole earth quake. The Lord sits in majesty in Jerusalem, exalted above all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Your name is holy, mighty king, Lover of justice, you have established fairness. You have acted with justice and righteousness throughout Israel. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow low before his feet, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also called him on his name. They cried to the Lord for help, and he answered them. He spoke to Israel from the pillar of cloud, and they followed the laws and decrees he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but you punished them when they went wrong. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain in Jerusalem, for the Lord our God is holy. Today's New Testament reading comes from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22 paying the imperial tax to Caesar. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius. And he asked them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. We often think that Jesus was a man of peace who did not have any problems with other people. But when we read the Bible, we learn that Jesus had occasional problems with his critics, especially Jewish religious leaders. When religious leaders enslaved people with religious laws and regulations, Jesus said, the truth will set you free. Jesus wanted to liberate people from the bondage of oppressive, abusive, and legalistic religion. So there was some tension and conflicts between Jesus and Jewish religious leaders. Today's Bible story is a, about an incident where Jesus' critics wanted to trip Jesus up and get Jesus into trouble. They asked Jesus this question. 
Is it okay for the Jews to pay taxes to the Roman government? It was a tricky question. If Jesus said to them, yes, Jews must pay taxes to the Roman government, they would say to Jesus, you are a traitor to fellow Jews. You are telling us to pay taxes to our enemies. You are a puppet of the Roman government. You are not the Messiah. On the other hand, if Jesus said, no, Jews must not pay taxes to the Roman government, then they would report Jesus to the Roman authorities and the Roman officers would arrest Jesus for treason and rebellion. Either way, Jesus would be in trouble. Jesus knew that his critics were scheming to discredit him. Instead of giving them a direct answer, Jesus gave them an indirect, shrewd answer. Jesus said, let me see one of your coins. Jesus took a look at the image on the coin and showed it to his critics and said, whose image is on the coin? They replied, Caesar's. Then Jesus said, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give God what belongs to God. They were amazed at his wisdom. As citizens of this country, we are obligated to pay our taxes to our government. Unless we pay our taxes, we go to prison for tax evasion. It is our civic duty to pay our taxes. But as Christians, we have a higher law to abide by, as well as our civic laws. In addition to paying our taxes to our government, we have to pay our respect, our obedience, our heart and soul to our God. Philosopher Francis Bacon said that there are three kinds of people in the world. The first kind is spider-like people. Spiders prey on little guys. They are selfish, greedy, and harmful people. The second kind is ant-like people. Ants work hard and saved hard, save hard for only themselves. The third kind is bee-like people. Bees work hard to pollinate flowers and produce honey. They live not only for themselves, but also for other beings. We Christians ought to be bee-like people, living for others as well as for ourselves. When Jesus said, give God what belongs to God, pastor friends of mine interpret this saying as, see, Jesus said that you should give God what belongs to God. 10% of your income belongs to God. You should give a 10% of your income to God. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Of course, I wouldn't complain if you give 10% of your income to our church, but I don't think that God is interested in our money. Our church needs money, but God does not need money. What God wants from us is not money, but our heart. Prophet Micah said, what does God want from you? God wants you to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. I heard about a rich Korean man who owned a company in California. He never missed Sunday services, and he was known as a strict tither. As he was at the top giver in his church, he felt he was entitled to rule the church. He acted as if he owned the church. To his employees, he was a stingy, mean, abusive, cruel bully. He was like a slave driver, abusing his employees, paying them as little as possible. Was he a good Christian? I wouldn't call him a good Christian. God wants him to behave humbly, to treat his employees kindly, and to share his business profits with his employees justly and generously. That's what God wants from him. Speaking of a rich man, I'm reminded of a joke. There was a rich man in a small, financially struggling church. He was a multimillionaire. One evening, his pastor asked him to share a testimonial about the secret of his financial success. The rich man said to his congregation, Folks, as you all know, I'm a multimillionaire. But 30 years ago, I was a poor man. 
One night I pray to God, God, please make me a rich man. During my prayer, God whispered to me, I want you to give me all you have. I said to God, God, all I have is $100. If I give you the $100, I will starve to death. But after the prayer, I obeyed God and God gave God all I had. When I gave God the $100, guess what happened? God began to pour blessings upon me beyond my wildest imaginations. Now I'm a multimillionaire. I have $5 million in cash. My point is this. When I gave God all I had, God blessed me richly. That's the secret to my financial success. When he finished his speech and sat down, the congregation applauded him enthusiastically. The man felt proud of himself. When the applause finally subsided and the church became quiet, a crippled old lady in the back coolly said, Do it again! Please join me in the prayer as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father prepare your journey, Jesus the Son guide your footsteps, the Spirit of life strengthen your body, the three in one watch over you on every road that you may follow. Amen. <laughs>